I'm Bob Emser, and I'm a sculptor boat builder. All right, well, that's the uh, last of three coats of varnish on the transom over the lettering. Uh, in uh, preparing to put a name on the boat, um, there's a lot of ways you could do it. Uh, the simple way would to have been gone to a um, sign shop and had vinyl letters cut out. Um, but to me, that was a little incongruent with uh, having built a wooden boat and putting vinyl letters on it. Uh, so <clears throat> I had recently read an article in uh, uh, Wooden Boat Magazine about gold gilting the uh, back of a uh, transom of a boat, putting the name on it. And it, it reminded me of my uh, gold gilting days of back when I used to own a frame shop. So I thought, well, I'll give that a, a shot uh, and gold leaf the letters on there and outline it. So the first thing that I did was I went to my computer and typed out the uh, name in several different fonts uh, to see which style I liked best. There are a couple of considerations. Um, first, there's a couple of different things about fonts. This particular one here has these little tails, and those little tails are called serifs, where in this one, there aren't any, and that's called a sans serif. Uh, one of the considerations that I wanted to uh, consider was that I'm going to be cutting these out to make sort of a stencil-like, and the ones that are a little more curved or script-like would have been harder to cut out because there's so many curved surfaces. So a uh, blockier style um, is really better. Uh, I ultimately like this top one the best, which is called uh, copper plate. Um, so after I decided that, and I wanted it to be in, in, in all caps, so I then <clears throat> Enlarge that. Uh, I had to do it on two different sheets uh, in order to get it to fit on an eight and a half by eleven. Uh, and then I print. And after it was printed, I then um, spray minted both of these together so that the um, onto a piece of poster board uh, so it'd be a little rigider when I could handle so I could handle it a little better. After I got the spray adhesive on, I was uh, very carefully lined them up so that they would uh, match well. And I had previously drawn a line under the letters to help do that. I then measured to see how wide they were and found a center line, which is going to be uh, critical for lining it up on the transom. I then uh, got a good sharp X-Acto knife and using a piece of poster board underneath, I then carefully cut out each letter. And once I got the uh, letters cut out, I was careful to uh, save the uh, inserts from the A and the O and the uh, R. And then it was time to start to prepare the transom. So uh, one of the first things I wanted to do is to sand the surface with some 320 grit paper to give it a little bit of a surface to bond to. And while I'm here, I'm just going to kind of hit all of it so that when I do varnish it, we're ready to go. All right, after that, <clears throat> take a tack cloth and clean off the dust. The first thing I want to do is to make sure that the boat is level so that I can work with a level off the back and level on up. 
So first thing we're going to do is find the center line. So I'm going to put a piece of tape. And I'll leave a little gap about where the words will be. I'll find the center here. level. Okay. Now we're going to determine where the name is going to be. I think it needs to be a little bit higher. So I'm going to cut my paper off. And we're going to position it using that center line. Put on with a couple of pieces of tape. Like so. And then we'll make sure that this is level this way. Should be. It's a little off. There we go, dead level. All right, so uh, the next thing we need to do is to fill in these spots where um, letters are missing. So the little piece that I saved, I'm just going to kind of guesstimate it. And then draw a little outline. And I'm not too concerned about being perfectly accurate in that when we, after we get the gold leaf on there, we're going to um, go around it with paint around the border. So the edges aren't going to be super critical at this point. Uh, right now, <clears throat> what I'm doing is to make sure that when I put the adhesive on there for the gold leaf to stick to, that I don't put adhesive behind these cutouts. And last one here with the O. All right, uh, now there's a, a number of ways to apply gold leaf. Uh, an old traditional way would have been to use a varnish and then as the varnish before it dried, you'd apply the gold leaf. That's really kind of tricky because you have to be uh, pretty precise on that drying time. <clears throat> I have actually been successful in taking like some spray polyurethane or something like that and spraying on there and applying it as it got on the tacky stage. Again, it, the uh, timing has to be just about right. Uh, this is actually a material that is made specifically for uh, gold leaf, which it's a, uh, a polymer glue um, that uh, stays uh, sticky uh, for quite a while. So the idea here is to put this on um, and to get it on as smooth as possible, so I've got a, an old lid here that I'm going to just pour some out. So you can see it just looks like regular uh, glue. Yeah. And um, taking an artist brush here. And one of the things about the stencil is I don't have to be really picky about where I get it on the outside just so I don't get too much built up in there. One of the nice things about uh, 
of sanding is as this is setting up, I can <clears throat> see across here where the glue is starting to dry that it is shiny. So I can see where I've been compared to the dull sanded surface of the boat. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, now the directions say you should let that uh, dry until it's clear or a little bit tacky. So we'll, and which it says usually about a half an hour. I don't think it'll take a half an hour uh, today because it's pretty uh, cool and uh, dry. All right, it looks like it's uh, pretty good and dry now. So we're gonna take the stencil off. Set it to the side and gold leaf comes in these books and the thing to do is to leave it on the transfer paper like this with the book because it's really very very delicate. Um, the other thing you want to make sure you do is turn the ceiling fan off uh, which I learned the hard way one time and close all the doors and windows. So this you simply want to put up here Press it. You can use pieces like this as well. And use a soft brush. To just kind of dab those on there, like so. brushing away the parts you don't want. First step, done. All right, after a little clean up, make sure there aren't any stray flecks around. I'm gonna take the tape off now. And I'm going to uh, coat this <clears throat> with just a, a fine spray of uh, polyurethane just to seal it down just a little bit. that uh, set up and then we'll um, do some outlining. All right, uh, now that uh, polyurethane is dried and the next step is I'm going to outline all of the letters with uh, black enamel. And the simple way I'm going to do that is with a um, ink pen. So I'm using a tester's uh, ink pen and reason being is this paint is UV protected. Uh, especially when I put uh, UV protected varnish over the top of it. Um, Sharpie markers are not UV protected. Even with the uh, varnish over it, they'll fade away. 
So the difference is, is that usually um, markers are a xylene based uh, thinner where this is a, an enamel uh, based thinner. Um, so this uh, comes with the, the tip is uh, really narrow one way and broad the other. So the trick here is, especially with rounded letters like this, is to take the pen and turn it as I'm moving so that I get a consistent thickness of the line. Uh, I've taken uh, I have an old school ruler here, uh, the kind that uh, you maybe have had when you're in grade school that has one of these little metal um, edges put in there. Uh, the reason that is, is so that uh, when you ink things, the ink won't uh, be um, siphoned underneath the, uh, the uh, straight edge. Um, I think it was a throwback when, uh, you know, everybody had little ink wells in their, uh, their desks. Um, certainly had ballpoint pens when I was in school. But that's what that little metal uh, ridge is in there for. Um, it's going to be our, to our advantage on this uh, project. I also put a little tape on the end of it so that it wouldn't scratch and that I can then rest my hand um, without actually touching the surface. So here we go. We'll see how we do. This ink, uh, our paint, I should say, wants to flow fairly uh, slowly. See, one of the things I'm doing is taking short strokes instead of trying to take long ones. It may be required going over it more than once also. The way that these pins are recharged is if you take a surface and you can push this down like so and then ink more more paint will come out. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Um, one of the things I learned was that um, by using the pen sort of dabbing like this, that the paint seemed to flow a little nicer, especially where some of the gold leaf showed through. So I've been going through and sort of touching it up a little bit like so. All right. Uh, next step will be to let this dry and then probably two to three coats uh, of uh, marine varnish on it and then we should be done. So there you have it. <clears throat> uh, in our uh, next episode, I will be uh, installing the oar locks and getting the leather collars on the oars. Um, I want to take a moment to thank all of the new subscribers to the channel. I really appreciate your support. If you want to give some additional support, uh, hit that Patreon button down in the corner and uh, give me a couple of bucks. Um, they'll really help out in um, producing these videos. Uh, so until next time, Thanks for watching.